Hi guys, welcome back to ThinkView. This is the Huawei MateBook D15, Huawei's 15-inch entry-level laptop that's selling in my country right now for an equivalent of around 700 US dollars. Now, it really surprised me because at this price point, this machine is capable of many things that no other Windows laptops can do. It's a machine that's designed to give the best user experience, both in its software and hardware. Now, software-wise, I mean, it's Windows 10, right? But Huawei also included many custom features that makes your experience with the machine much more exciting and seamless if you're also using a Huawei smartphone. Now, that's starting to sound a bit familiar, isn't it? Yes. What I'm talking about is an ecosystem, the Huawei ecosystem. Okay, I'm gonna start with the hardware because clearly not everyone's using a Huawei phone. For this MateBook D15 alone, it has pretty good quality for its price. And quality here comes from actual using experience. If you look at the external design, there's really nothing too special about it. If it's not for the Huawei logo, it looks just like any other laptop nowadays. There's really nothing spectacular about it. The bezels are thin, but not like wow worthy thin. I mean, it is a nice looking laptop for the price, but it's definitely not an exceptionally pretty laptop. But besides the look, it delivers some very noteworthy values compared to other machines in the same price range. For I really like the whole aluminum build, sturdy frame giving me a pretty assured feeling when I rest my hands on it. Sometimes I even put both of my elbows on it and I don't feel a thing. Definitely one of the most rigid builds in this price range. The aluminum surface is also a little textured, feels great by the touch. But because of that, this mystic silver color appears a little dull so it doesn't have that shiny, stunning look of a premium device. A good thing is that, for such durability, this is a very light machine. 1.5 kilograms for a 15.6 inch laptop is really good. The internal design is also nothing too special, but it meets all of the standards. It has a good standard keyboard layout, large and square cut keycaps so I never miss hit any keys. But the keys feel a little plasticky and textured, so it doesn't feel very friendly on your fingertips. Typing is quite flat with very little travel, but in return, it's very fast and responsive. Large touchpad. Tracking feel is not the smoothest, but it's fast and accurate. Good enough for most users. A pretty special thing is that the webcam is hidden between the F6 and F7 keys, a security and aesthetic solution that shows Huawei's daring to be different spirit. It's good for those of you who are concerned about your privacy. You know, many of you often put a piece of tape over your webcam, so with this, you don't have to do that anymore. Some manufacturers include a slider to cover up the webcam, but that often sacrifices the clean, even look of the bezels, and to me, this is much less distracting. But similar to the old Dell XPS webcam, this is not a very flattering camera angle. It points up directly at your nose, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you do a lot of video calls or conferencing. The lower bezel is a little thicker, hindering the premium look of the machine. But again, I don't expect more from a $700 machine. On the right, you have the power button doubling as a fingerprint sensor. It's quite fast and responsive. Unfortunately, there's no facial recognition lock-in option for this machine. Overall, a clean and compact design that delivers just what you'd expect with the price, and a little bit more. For performance, it's the average Ryzen 5 3500U CPU. Nothing wrong with it delivers as expected. For the last week, I've web served with many many Chrome tabs with no problems at all. If you buy it for studying, web browsing, watching movies, or basic photo editing with Photoshop or Lightroom, then it will do just fine. But when I put in around 20 raw images, around 60 megabytes each, and start color grading, then it starts to lag. So, you kinda get the idea, right? It's comfortable for basic office work or studying, but if you have more intensive demands like more frequent or heavier graphic designings, for example, then you should consider a more powerful machine. In Vietnam, this is the only spec option for the MateBook D15, 
but you might have other options depending on where you are, so make sure to check that out. But this is not a machine made for designers anyways, because display quality is only average. Full HD IPS, average color gamuts, average brightness, everything is just okay. The speakers do get quite loud, but it's your typical laptop speakers, lacking bass and separations. So yeah, not an exceptional speaker system, but entirely acceptable. For iOS, you have an HDMI and three USB-A's, which is great. But you only have one Type-C, which is not Thunderbolt 3, and that's not ideal. For upgradability, RAM is soldered on, but you can replace the SSD and the Wi-Fi card. There is no extra SSD slot just this 2.5-inch SATA slot. But the silly thing is, there's no integrated SATA adapter to connect it to the mainboard. And from what I found out, you'd have to buy an HDD cable like this if you want to have an extra drive here. And what comes at a sacrifice of this is the battery is really small. 41 watt hour for a 15 inch laptop is really not a lot. You only get around 3.5 to 4 hours of use time. Okay, normally the review would have ended here. But that's not all to this MateBook D15. And that is why I'm saying that this machine is more than a Windows laptop. Your software experience is not limited to Windows 10. Look at this Huawei Share icon. This isn't just a sticker, it's an NFC sensor. If you have an NFC-supported Huawei phone, like the P40 Pro that I have here, you can just put it on here, turn on the Huawei PC Manager app that's pre-installed in the machine, and boom, your devices are linked. Very fast and straightforward. Now you can do a lot of cool stuff, like dragging and dropping files between your laptop and your phone. Copy and pasting works both ways too. Very fast, very impressive. Even the small things like the sound effects and animations are also very smooth and seamless. It shows the attention to details that you don't see in just any laptop. Or you also have this multi-screen feature, basically a mirroring of the phone onto your laptop. Once connected, you can set your phone aside and use two devices in one. You can make and receive calls, everything from images to audio and microphones, keyboard and mouse, all get auto-transferred to your laptop. A very seamless and exciting experience. Another small thing that I also like is Huawei's screenshot feature. It automatically detects the text within a screenshot frame, or detects a photo within it so you can edit it right away, instead of having to go through a few steps like Windows default. These features are already a plus for the MateBook compared to direct competitors in the same price range like Asus VivaBooks or Dell's Inspirance. In short, I think the MateBook D15 is a worth buying machine. It deserves attention from users and tech enthusiasts. What Huawei is trying to do here is to create an ecosystem to suck users in like Apple is doing so successfully. And honestly, the experience that I had with these two devices in the last week isn't that much inferior to the things that I'm so familiar with like AirDrops, Apple Handoff, or iMessage. If it wasn't for all the scandals and the political dramas that's putting the Huawei name on headlines in the last couple of years, I think Huawei would be a very, very serious contender in the mobile consumer tech world. And the proof is here. They have some seriously high quality product and software in their pocket. I would love to see a significant opponent to Apple in the ecosystem game in the near future. Because you know, for us consumers, competition is always a good thing. So hopefully, Huawei would get past the challenges and continue in this direction because they're definitely doing some things right. And that's my take on the Huawei MateBook D15. If you've been enjoying our videos, make sure to subscribe and follow us on social media to get the latest updates. See ya!